I never wanted to be a teacher. When I was a kid, I hated teachers. In high school, there was only one teacher that I could even stand, Mr. Sanderson, 10th grade history. He, he had a toupee, and you could actually endure his class for 50 minutes. So now I've been a high school teacher for 22 years, and right away you ask, how come? Everybody asks, how come? It's a good question. I went into teaching to avoid the draft. It was 1968. I had wanted to go into politics, but they kept shooting all of my male role models. And then when I got out of college, there was Vietnam and the draft, and they wanted to shoot me. I couldn't bring myself to go to Canada. So that left three choices, the army, the clergy, and teaching in an inner city school. So I started teaching down in the Decker section in a school that was built oh, somewhere around the time that Edison invented the light bulb. After about five days, I reconsidered Vietnam. I mean, at least they had a demilitarized zone there. I spent six years at Decker Public High. My platoon leader was Marvin Kirk. Marvin had already taught history there for two years, and he tried to teach me how to run a classroom and keep the bureaucrats off my back. I learned half the lesson. After the war, they let me out, and Leslie and I ran to these ever so peaceful semi-suburbs. Marvin ran, too, right out of teaching and into the State Department, and then on into his own consulting firm. Marvin became one of the best and the brightest, and also one of the richest. We still talk. Again, you ask, why is this man still teaching? Why didn't he pull a Marvin? Well. Part of the reason is that I still had my ideals. Society still cared about teachers. You got respect instead of just disposable income. But all of that has changed. We have real problems now. We still depend on education in America to cure everything from crime to the lack of fiber in the American diet. But we have got students who don't know anything that they haven't seen on TV in the last 24 hours. And parents who send their kids off in the morning don't care what happens to them until they get home at night. And a school board that just wants to save money and make sure that we don't teach anything that they haven't seen on TV in the last 24 hours. I know that sounds cynical, and it is probably not fair, but some days it seems like an understatement. And speaking of understatement, there's my salary. What I make in a year, a plastic surgeon can make in one afternoon. Don't get me started. But every now and then, you do get a kid who wants to think about something a little more profound than what beach to go to on the 4th of July. Which brings up July 3rd, 1863, a date worth remembering. Does anyone here remember it? Does anyone know why I even brought it up? Come on, somebody, anybody, take a ticket, take a chance. How about our budding Matthew Brady? Todd? What? July 3rd, 1863. Why is it significant? Um, it was the day before the 87th birthday of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, Todd, but that is not the right answer to the question. That is not the answer that has anything to do with the reading assignment. Well, I was going to get to that tonight. Uh, right after you finish in the dark room, I suppose. Right. Uh -huh. This is American history, not photography. The subject is the Civil War. Dead people, Mr. Glass. Dead facts. There's nothing I can use. Look at Winkler. I know about you. You're a lot smarter than you pretend to be, but you're not half as smart as you could be. You have cruised through this school for two years now, and I'm not going to let you do that in here. OK? OK, July 3rd, 1863, Todd. Think <laughs> Gettysburg. Right, that's where Lincoln lived. No. Lincoln never lived in Gettysburg. 
He was from Illinois. He had a Gettysburg address, Mr. Glass. <laughs> okay, Todd, you want to show how clever you are? July 3rd, 1863 is the Battle of Gettysburg. I want you to give me a four-page paper telling me about that day and about why the Gettysburg address was so important. You at close of school tomorrow. No way, Mr. Glass. Way, Mr. Winkler. Oh, you can't be serious. Uh, sign someone in here to help me. Get your mother to help you. What do you mean, get his mother? Like I haven't enough to do? Look, when it comes to Todd's school, that is your job. Mrs. Winkler, do you ever sit down and go over Todd's homework with him? I have my own homework, Mr. Glass. I sell real estate. Do you have any idea what's happening in real estate today? Not a lot. If I don't sell, no food, no mortgage payment, no car. Todd has got to learn how to be responsible for himself, just like I did. You don't look out for yourself, nobody else will either. A useful lesson, Mrs. Winkler. Which he won't learn if I sit down and do his homework for him. With him, not for him. Mr. Glass, I'm a working parent. I pay taxes, a lot of taxes, so that this town can have a good school system. Well, we try, Mrs. Winkler. A lot of taxes. Read my lips. No new teachers. Mr. Glass, this loading up on homework is exactly what I talked to the school committee about the other day. And Sarah Gentry said in order for our children to be more well-rounded, they need real work. Mr. Glass? Mr. Glass? Mr. Glass, we are talking to you. We have been reviewing the books and the materials used in our history classes, Mr. Glass, and in your case, we are shocked. Shocked to find that one of the books assigned by you is this trash about George Washington owning slaves. He did own slaves, Mrs. Gentry. A lot of people did. It's a fact. Who do you think cleaned up after George at Mount Vernon, Martha? Mr. Glass, I am not going to let you sit there and malign our nation's first president, the father of our country. I should tell you that Sarah's husband uses this actor dressed up as Washington to sell Audis and BMWs at his car dealership. Well then, Mrs. Gentry, how about if I malign our third president, Thomas Jefferson? Surely you are not suggesting that Thomas Jefferson held slaves too? Well, he held at least one of them very closely, Mrs. Gentry. He slept with her. Defiling one of our most revered historical heroes deprives our children of just one other positive role model and drives them further into promiscuity, apathy, and drugs. We are removing the Washington book from our curriculum. And the first thing... You think this is a nightmare, right? Just my paranoid delusions? Well, there's this town in California where they banned Little Red Riding Hood because one of the illustrations showed a bottle of wine in the basket for Grandma. It was probably the wrong vintage. Mrs. Gentry, you want proof that he slept with a slave? He did it for years on end, you know. Do you want proof? <gasps> Bernie! You really love this stuff, don't you, Bernie? You put her right over the edge again. You also have some imagination. Look. You know that Jefferson slept with his slave. And I know that Jefferson slept with his slave, but you can't expect Sarah Gentry to buy it. Edith, people like her can ruin a whole school system. Now you're going over the edge. Look, I'm the principal here, Bernie, and she's not ruining anything. Do you know what she told Patsy Gilmartin? She told her to stop teaching Dr. Shivago. And do you know why? Uh, yes, because it's full of communists. In Russia, in 1918, what did she expect? Ivan Bosky, Leona Helmsley? Nobody is pulling Dr. Zhivago or the Washington biography. The rest of the board is too smart. Anyway, this isn't the place to fight, Bernie. Teaching is where you fight. You taught Douglas MacArthur in the Pacific and General Custer at Little Bighorn. Which guy do you want to be? She's right, you know, Bernie. She really is. You just like to cause trouble. My wife, the social worker, the real optimist in the family. If she sees a light at the end of the tunnel, it's a golden sunset. When I see one, I try to convince everyone it's an oncoming train. When we lived in the city, Leslie ran a battered wives program. And this is back in the time when people still believed that Ralph Cramden would never really send Alice to the moon. Other than Sarah, how was your day? Oh, it was about like July 3rd, 1863. What happened then? 